In this video, I'd like to demonstrate four different ways to segment a single tooth uh, from a dental model in Mesh Mixer. Okay, the, uh, the first way, um, and actually this was a model that was posted on uh, the Mesh Mixer uh, dental Facebook group. Um, I think Kurt was having a difficult time printing this or trying to get it to load into preform. Um, it looks like this tooth right here is actually a library tooth from a specific CAD software, dental CAD software. You kind of see it's popped in there. Um, just the appearance of it, you can kind of tell it's it's not so natural, but it does look good um, as far as uh, you know, just the aesthetics go and everything like that. But uh, you know, um, the the first way to to segment a tooth is if you notice something like this and it has been created in a dental CAD software more than likely uh, you'll be able to just select and double click on it <clears throat> because it's kind of its own body, it's its own uh, shell, I guess. Um, so if you ever notice that, you know, you get a model from someone or something like that, or you have one that you've made yourself um, that you've imported into Mesh Mixer, um, sometimes, I don't know all the time, but at least in this case, um, the library tooth that was uh, combined to this model in a different program um, didn't actually Boolean union through, um, or it wasn't, I guess, robust enough or something. Um, so it's uh, it's on its own. So that's the first way. And it's kind of lucky, and that's not always the case, but that's a good tip to know. Um, so that's, uh, that's number one. And to officially segment that, because we don't want to lose the selection, I'm just going to create a face group. Control G. Okay, so now anytime I want, I can kind of come back to this, and let's just say I'm doing something over here, um, and I don't have this selected anymore. I don't have to, you know, if I were kind of going around and selecting, it wouldn't have to do that. It's already its own entity now, so um, I can actually just double-click on it. Any face group, anything that you've created a face group, you can double-click on. It'll just um, select it. So let's clear that. Okay, so that was kind of a, a cheater way to do the first one. Um, this is actually uh, the first real way, probably, and probably the way that most people do it, probably the easiest way, okay? probably the most guaranteed way, as far as I know. Um, and these are all just um, you know ways that I have found that work. Um, I'm not saying one way is, is the way to do it or, or not to do it. Um, these are just several different ways to do it, and um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But, uh, in, certain, but uh, in certain cases, you can kind of get the feeling for when one's better than the other. Um, but here we go. Here's this one. I'm just going to do a selection. This is basically just a surface selection. Um, kind of ramp that up a little bit here. Get a big, almost the size of the tooth itself, just to make it a little bit easier on myself. You know, and one thing I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to clear the selection just for a second. Um, just so I can get some of these edges right here, I'm actually going to get this tooth out of the way. Double click. I'm going to hit Y to separate it. Now it's actually not in my model anymore. As you can tell there. that. This will be a little easier to select those triangles now. So same brush. Kind of just do one big click on the front and then just get right towards the margin. One more click. I'm going to hit C to recenter my view. I'm going to do everything except for just like the closest little edges there if uh, I can't get to those. Like that's just fine. But like in here, I'm going to show you a little trick for, for getting those. Um, I need to make this brush just a little bit smaller to get in here. But like I said, I'm going to save that little margin just for this last bit. Oh, there's a little piece there. I'm going to deselect that. 
Okay, so one little tool that you can do uh, with the selection, uh, surface selection, is you can actually increase the crease angle um, threshold to, I find about anywhere from like 80 to 90. Um, and basically what that does is, as far as I know, it will um, only select the triangles that have a difference of, I guess, 82.76 degrees from the prior triangle that was selected. Um, so it basically will stop um, at a certain threshold. So the idea is that hitting these margins is a threshold. It's going to be a certain threshold. And what I've found is that anywhere between, like I said, 80 and 90 uh, tends to work pretty good. And actually, if you get a kind of a nice big brush here, um, if you click down in the in the middle where you know you're not going to hit anything, and just kind of work your way out. I'm holding down, and actually you can see that fill in. It just kind of fills in. Um, and it doesn't work all the time, like I said, but uh, it does work to get those little areas that it's just kind of difficult to get. I'm going to try to get that last little bit there. I don't know if it's going to work. That yeah, worked pretty good. Um, I can get this bit just a second, too. And just get these little inner angles. And I don't really have to worry about it, you know, selecting the next two, though, where you can see the shadows on it, but it's not selecting it. I'm still holding uh, the left click. And this is what I was talking about over here. Kind of click over here and then just bring my mouse over. And it doesn't get it all, but if you kind of played with that angle, I bet you could. Um, I'm going to get that little piece out of it. Just because I know what's next, it's a good idea to not have this all jagged right there. And just quickly, quickly, just quickly, quickly, just try to get this into a more smooth shape. Okay. Um, about this whole side. Okay, so that's basically good enough. Um, and I was just using the surface select, so then you could go uh, control G, hit a face group, and then you go Y, and you can separate it. Oh, got to make sure it's selected first. Double click on it. See, it's a good thing we made a face group. Then you click Y, uh, and then it is separated from the original model. Let's hide that so you can see. And now there's a big gaping hole there but uh, we don't have to worry about that um, for right now. So we're going to go ahead and show you that again. And I'm actually going to undo, undo. And OK, so that was the uh, second uh, selection, um, tooth segmentation, um, but really the, the kind of the first main way. So we're going to clear this out. And we're going to go ahead and do another selection here, but this time I'm going to use the lasso. Um, one thing that um, I haven't seen too many people use is actually, uh, or, or I guess I haven't really seen it used at all, is you can bring this over to the lasso, and instead of doing that red line kind of free space um, where you kind of select something like that, and it's always kind of weird anyway, um, you can actually, if you, if, it's, if you make sure it's on lasso, you can left click on a, on a surface and drag, and you will actually draw a line that uh, sticks to the surface. Um, and you can release and then move the model and then keep on going. So it's kind of like a, uh, I think it's like a spline or a, uh, just a, a line here. Um, so I'm going to left click, and I'm just going to start going around the edge here. Oops. And one cool thing about this is I totally messed up there. Um, so I'm just going to start where it looks a little bit okay, and left click again, and then continue, and it will just fix my mistake. I'll go back like that. Same thing here, kind of come around margin. Now you're probably thinking, well, yeah, this is way easier and way faster than the other one, so why are we even, you know, considering the first one? But um, actually, this one is is kind of finicky. Um, I'm not sure why. It just is. Um, that's a little squiggly there. I'm going to see if I can make it better. Back. Let's just go like this. I know that's uh, a 
just an artifact that will come up. And instead of connecting from the beginning to the end, you do have to go from the end to the beginning, or it will reset the line. I'll come back around, I finish right on the original, and there we go. That worked. Um, it doesn't always work like that. Sometimes you get some errors, um, but that worked pretty good. So uh, I'm going to hit B. We're going to smooth that boundary. Accept. And that is method number two. Let's do a control G, base group. Okay. Um, so then, let's see here. The, the last way that I am aware of segmenting out a, a tooth, or for that matter, really anything. Um, in fact, uh, I think there's a lot to be said about this tool, and it's exceptionally, exceptionally powerful. Um, I think there's a lot of uses in, probably uh, for orthodontic applications and uh, kind of batch tooth segmentation, um, but I'll just kind of give you a glimpse of it here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, first off, just get rid of these face groups. I'm going to select everything. And clear face group. That's back to where we were. And let's go to edit. Let's generate face groups. So this just tries to basically make face groups for you. Um, teeth are, are super complicated, so it's not that easy, but if you had a very symmetrical, a very um, you know normal shaped object with a lot of primitive shapes, it could segment it out easily, very quickly, and it save you a ton of time um, if you're trying to like reverse engineer something. Um, so here though, um, you can you can see that it's just basically created everything as one group here, and that's not what we want. Um, you, you can use this uh, edge angle mode and dial the angle threshold down to, I think it's anywhere between like 5 and 10. So there's 5. Um, you know, that looks pretty good. Some of the teeth are already starting to kind of segment out there. You can see that. That one's just the lingual cusp and that's the buccal cusp. Um, but really, we're just work working with this tooth here. Um, that actually happens to be all almost all the same group um but it's also the same as this gingiva up here and this tooth next to it so that's not ideally what we want we're going to try to get these two so they're uh, separate um, one thing I've, I've noticed is i can increase this size threshold just max it out Oops. and then let's start to just kind of increment this a little bit so we're Let's see here, we're too, is that too far selected? So let's go. Just kind of dropping it down. That was 4.9, that was 4.8. Okay, so it's still, st uh, staying kind of isolated as a group, but it's separated from this other tooth. Um, so this is basically what we're looking for. Um, and you could even toy with this even more. And, you know, if you were kind of working on per tooth basis, you kind of just dial it in. But um, for this, that's so close. I'd probably just keep it like that. But let's see what we can get. Let's go. Eight. One.
yeah, so I think that's about it. It's as good as it's going to get there. Um, but from here, we go accept. And, you know, as I was kind of telling you before, the beauty of face groups, and look at this, it's almost already completely, well, almost uh, segmented out here, but, you know, a lot of them are. Um, but we're going to go ahead and hit select, grab a brush, and just double click on it. And that'll take care of that group. Um, and then, you know, because there's a little fill in, just do that. But if you're trying to do this for, for multiple teeth, um, this would probably be the way to do it. Um, okay, so then that's selected. I'm going to do a smooth on it and accept. And we're going to create a face group. And it was already a face group, but that's the, that's the new one there. And so that is the third, probably real way, but fourth actual way. beginning the process of segmenting a tooth from 